faced obstacles as a woman? Is it fair to ask that? You Is can it totally ask that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's. I I'm totally open to talking about that. Great. Um, we touched. You and I touched a bit on this. I j just generally try to pretend it's not a thing. Um, that's how you know. For sure, every day someone like, "Hey, you're a woman," <laughs> and I'm like, "Yep, did that." <laughs> <What's> <laughs> that? <laughs> I am aware. Yeah, right? wow. <laughs> Which is fine because I get it. It's rare. I mean, in my world, it's not rare. The, my studio's fifty-fifty. There's, I know so many incredible uh, young producers and engineers who are female. So, but for you know the majority of these older recording establishments, it's a bunch of old white guys. So I get that it's uh, that I'm different <laughs> that way, and I think where I'm at with it is everyone is going to have reasons why they might get a particular gig or might not get a particular gig, um, and that have so little to do with the quality of your work or whether or not you're right for it. And so I'm sure that it's come up. Um, actually, I'm not. I'm not even sure of that, but. Me being a woman is kind of like everyone has their challenges. If that's a challenge, I'm not really going to give it the time of day. I'm just going to move forward and keep doing what I do. Cool. And you know, there's sexist people in the like being a woman in the world. You face these people. It's not specific to my job at all. <laughs> you can't really walk down the street without encountering something mm. along those lines. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd love to get May on the mic soon too. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. That would be awesome. With that said, we're in a new era since November. Um, have you found, whether obvious or subconsciously, you feel safer um, in an environment to speak up and go, "Hey, actually, um, can we rephrase this?" Or because right. we're allowed to now. Suddenly. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, th I mean, that's a really good question. Um, I I think I made a conscious decision fairly recently, which may or may not coincide, I'm not sure, but um, to be visible and to speak and to not, because you hear a lot of th things that you dismiss. Um, so uh, recently I have made a conscious effort to address those things. Um, I don't know if I feel any more or less safe, but I just do it now because I think it's important and generally people are receptive. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question? Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, oh. Did you say anything? Yeah. I don't know. Um, just so you guys know, I am in the film industry. Um, it's a different story. It's a different story. And uh, I kind of try to do what, what Elisa said she does to like, I'm just. Um, but sometimes it's it's easy to say that and easier to say that than to so uh, I've been very lucky in the studio where I work now. The staff is really nice. Like I haven't really had a, an issue with them, but I've had I've had issues with people coming from outside, clients or editors. And uh, yes, and then after the Me Too movement started, I uh, there was a guy that made a very inappropriate comment and. Um, I actually came to my boss and I said, like, this is what happened. What are you going to do about it? I was very, like, I was like, you know, like, I, 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 I know my value and I know that they value me and that I'm important for the studio. And I had that confidence and I went there and I had all the, I'm the only uh, audio female audio, audio engineer in a crew of 12 people. And uh, all of the guys backed me up. And, uh, yeah, and they... Um, and now I feel more comfortable. I just go ahead and I tell them. It's just I'm not gonna put up with this. Like, good for you. yeah. So uh, it's a good time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a good time. I think after that happened, it, it was when because I've had gone through stuff that I felt uncomfortable with, and then um, after the Me Too movement, it just gives you that. That's why it's so important. It gives you that confidence to to come and speak up. So yeah, sometimes I just try. To pretend it's not there because you don't want to. You don't want to let that interfere with your work. But um, all I do, if I can't ignore that, uh, ignore it, I just take that frustration and I just turn it into something else. I turn it into work and feel, and then I just do a good, it ju just a good work. Just keep doing um, what I'm doing basically. But I use it as a tool. That frustration as a tool now. I'll so say something too. yeah. Um, 
That, that's I'm really proud of you. <laughs> but uh, um, get, and it's good to, ha to have people support you like that. I think there's two issues that historically go back, you know, with more men in the studio than women um, in the history of, of sound. But also we're dealing with, you're talking the film industry, we're dealing with video and audio. And there's always uh, been a history of uh, audio being seen more as a support in the video world, which is changing. So, and, and you know, great producers um, and directors who love what sound can do for, for picture will see that. Audio can't be anything without video. We're all heading in that direction, but it doesn't mean that it, it, it should be seen as a support. It has its own art, and without audio, <laughs> video wouldn't, you know, be what it is. But also, without, you know, video and high res and what's happening with video and amazing uh, editors, etc., that can do so much for audio as well. I, I do believe it goes both ways. Um, and I had been um, president of the Audio Engineering Society because of my work in audio education. It's a volunteer job, um, and I took it. Um, and I ended up working with a lot of programs from around the world. And it seems that if there are more women in university-based programs that come with a music degree or some kind of degree. And if it came through science, sometimes you see more male-oriented people. And it really doesn't matter what program you go through or not. A lot of people will say their real learning happens when they're out hands-on. But there isn't as much mentoring in studios as there used to be. And yet, I'm really glad you got paid because I also think people weren't treated fairly in the past. And uh, women and men. And um, I was asked when I was president, I was telling you yesterday, I'll make, try to make this short, I, uh, if I would um, take over something that at that time was called Women in Audio. And I didn't. And I didn't want to because I had gone to some of those sessions and meetings. And they, um, there were a lot of people complaining, a lot of women together complaining. And I didn't, it, I didn't want that to be an issue. I didn't want it to represent to me, it was like men in music. So yes, I do agree now that probably it might have been good for me to do something because I think people now are, are running um, that in a, in a healthy way. But uh, I thought it was more important to support women. And in the program I ran for 20 years uh, when I built on the BAMP Center program, audio program, which became quite famous internationally and competitive, there were always many, many, many women. And Leslie Ann Jones commented on that with, um, what's his name, Pasa uh, Pensado. Pensado. Um, she sent me the clip and she was saying, well, just, you know, go to this program. You know, uh, Teresa Leonard seems to have a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of women in there. And I thought, well, don't, doesn't everybody? But then I, you know, a, a colleague of mine reminded me that while I was talking about when I had first gone to McGill, I was on a session, this is a long time ago, when this guy came in for a session with another group of people from CBC or something. He said, oh, c'est le fun, un fille dans le studio. You know, it's fun, a girl in the studio. And I forgot completely about that comment. But um, I certainly did try to make sure that we always, and I didn't have to try, that was the thing. You just put women on panels, you find amazing women everywhere, and you, you, you bring them in as faculty, or you support them, or you give their name to somebody. And that's how you do it. And we were talking about Emily Lazar and so many people, Leslie Ann Jones, Darcy mm -hmm. Proper. Um, there's just so many people that are in, in I, I don't have all the names, but they, sh they should be on panels. And, and uh, that's how you do it. Um, and there was one other thing uh, I mentioned to you, and I can't remember what it was. You said I should mention it, but I, I don't remember. I've also seen people you know, go into very different areas, too. I, I was at the University of Iowa when, um, well for, for a short period of time. And I was a recording engineer for the School of Music there. And uh, I met a young girl who was a violinist who came in, and she became very interested in what we were doing. And her mom called and said, you know, can she take a course? And there was a course being given at the time at, in that school. Um, and she went on to go to McGill and Banff and, and went into psychoacoustics. And she is now the, she went into neuroscience as well. She's the, Poppy Crum is her name, and she's the head um, chief scientist for Dolby. So she's all over the world speaking everywhere. And that's because she was exposed at, you know, I don't take credit for, for we all make connections and that's how we get places. But um, she was exposed to so many wonderful people and it's all about who you meet along the way. It's mentors and it's putting yourself out there and standing up. Someone will say no, but if you don't ask, you already have no. 
as one of my students told me once, she was from uh, Spain. She just said, you know, my father used to tell me, if you don't ask, you already have no. So you have to go out with that attitude. And we run into it at every age. And it's not always running into it with men. It's running into it in, in places where power is an issue or, you're, or you know, it goes both ways, but it can be men, it can be women. So you just have to be uh, speak up and, and look for mentors and look for help and don't be afraid to ask for it. Thank you. Whoa. Thank you for that. And I'm really glad to hear you say that you, you know, especially when you sort of were aware of this thing happening to you, that you were like, not today, Satan. Not today. Um, I have a, a kind of a, a redirection question. Um, further to what you were saying about, you know, not wanting to get into mm -hmm. rooms where it's just women complaining about the things that we face, because those things are real and we need community yeah. and all those sorts of things, but a lot of times we end up in the same situation where we're in the room with the same people and we're having the same conversations, but the gears aren't really, like the rubber's not really hitting the pavement. There needs to be someone facilitating those meetings, so and that's what I realized. There's yeah. a bunch of things going on within mm -hmm. the Women in Music Canada, within the CFM, uh, with um, some collaboration with uh, IATSE and um, UBCP, and there's some stuff on an executive level mm. going on right now. But one of the questions I had was, we're all kind of doing the work that we can, but for the male producers on the panel and for anybody else who wants to jump in on this, we accept that there are really awesome, really, really heart-forward male allies, and as people who have control over spaces where people work, A, have you seen this stuff happening? B, do you have an express policy for what to do about it? And C, in past cases, what have you done? All the men have done. <laughs> 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 I'm just curious. Like, we're spending so much time yeah. talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Uh, and now I was going to ask earlier, and but now my brain's on a couple different things, but is as a you know, privileged white male in this industry, I'm, I'm always wondering what... Um, uh, the male producers and engineers can do more um, to to make it a, a maybe a more welcoming um, place and workplace and that kind of stuff. I don't know, but uh, you know, thinking about um, my experience, like a lot of my clients, I know I played a song by Ken today, but probably like eighty to ninety percent of my clients are female artists, so I tend to already have like a really equal vibe kind of happening in the studio already. So. Um, I can't really think of any, uh, you know, instances where you know we've we've had to deal with too much. It's been it's been pretty great, and I've worked on a lot of records with Elisa. And but yeah, anyways, I I don't know. I think you do. I mean, a lot of the men that I know in this community are very supportive and make the space really safe. And it's just kind of second nature, um, but I think you might be special yeah. <laughs> um, in that. <laughs> yeah. But I think Which it's is generally something that we can all, like, okay, yeah. so we'll take our friend Sean Cole. Yes. Uh, makes an effort, uh, yeah, yeah, he sure. so okay. sh um, Sean uh, makes an effort to, when he gets a record, to, to you know, to, to hire as many uh, women um, engineers on that record as he can, whether it's you know an assistant or you know, this is Sean as as producer on the record. So it's like I'm going to make sure that my si my engineer is a woman or my editor and and whatever. And so I think that's really gr I mean I w him and I we went for beers and talked about that. And he was like, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. So I, th I think it's great that guys are going out for beers and going like, what are you going to do? I don't know what are you going to do. And we're all like trying to yeah to do something better. So. So that's so it comes to me because this is the forum to talk about this. Like, what else can we, what else can we vote for beers for and, and talk <laughs> about? <laughs> yeah, that's a. No. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll kind of echo a lot of what, what you've said. Sure. The, in that, uh, you know, I, I work with a lot of female artists from Alanis Morissette to Ricky Lee Jones and so many people. So you're obviously uh, uh, conscious and aware. Um, and I, I've actually. Oddly enough, living in in Hollywood, which has been the the been the press and the seat of all of this, um, I've actually seen the opposite over the years. 
Um, when I first started, um, I worked a lot at Village Recording Studios, who at the time had four female engineers on staff. And one of them gave me one of my biggest breaks in my career by just referring me to an artist. And the project turned out to be very successful. And um, I, I helped Barbara and um, Peggy and a number of the other th women that were working at the village at the time. Sunset Sound, where my studio is based, um, has had a history of hiring women. In fact, uh, Peggy McCreary, who was on staff there for years, was Prince's engineer for a long time. So um, I've actually seen the opposite, where women are very welcome. And yeah, maybe there's been times in my career where I've said to the studio manager, you know, I know you want to put her on the session as an assistant, but this is a bunch of really hardcore guys, and I don't think that would be the best match in the world. So perhaps a woman has been excluded because of, of the situation. But um, in the past and, and right now, uh, it's it always been very, very open and equal. I can't speak to pay issues or, or getting work, but um, I've honestly, I've absolutely seen the opposite. So I've been managing here for two years, and a lot of resumes I receive are young men. Uh, but we, I think all our collective awareness um, has brought it to the top of my mind, and Cassandra is was brought to us from Brandon, and, and I'm hoping that she'll be involved here. An idea that you said that uh, I want to float that is just an idea that just triggered is, w would it be cool to have a policy statement on our website saying we support the empowerment of women and we're not gonna put up with, I mean. Hey, yeah, um, I just wanted to add that if you um, care about getting women to come to your studio, um, put women there. So when I was looking for a studio to intern at, Monarch was my choice because Elisa was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, o like almost exclusively why I picked Monarch. Um, and I knew that already and I'd heard about you. And then when I went on the website to the engineer list, I saw another girl's name there. Olivia was on the site. And I was like, oh my god, that's where I'm going. That's and that was mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. main reason why. So I think if you want women to come to you, put their faces there, put their names out there, that you already have women there, because um, it's no secret women like working with other women, um, and I've always felt like really great at Monarch because of that. Yeah. Ditto okay. our non-binary siblings, ditto our... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All the intersections. It, women tend to be good about being, <laughs> sorry I hate to say this, but, um, what's her name again? Cassandra, Cassandra wonderful, great personality. So is Brandon too, by the way. But <laughs> you know, just just in the yeah. thing. I mean, we're in a service industry, and what I loved doing was trying to promote. And you know, and when you're a bit older, you can kind of be like a parent. You know, y you can tell them, okay, do this next time, don't do that. I mean, I think giving great feedback when you're at this point from and being able to take it from anyone is it's about respect and it's about having a bit of a hard shell. Um, not not gender related so much, but I, there's just one little thing I have to say, and I promise I'll stop. But I I ran into something. Um, I had a, a student who was transgender um, in one of my last years um, working when I was in Alberta, and that person taught me a lot about gender, because even you know though I didn't like to draw too much attention, but I'd always make jokes about well we hear better you know women have better you know pitch just jokes in the studio sometimes but uh, most women I'd see more women in radio or in broadcast or in production at roles and yet there'd be you know the engineers and the mastering engineers too so it's everywhere um, but this person 
and I don't even like to use she, he, whatever, but it, it just taught me a lot about gender because we all have different sides of our personality and sometimes, you know, the, the female side can be stronger in the female and or stronger in the male, you know, it, it's, um, it's an interesting thing, it's about respect, really, when it comes down to it, that's, right. that's the big word and today's um, studio is different than it was in the past and what happens in the studio and what people are forced to deal with is different today too because of the budgets and people are just a little more respectful and I that was one thing I found distasteful in the industry you know when I started so um, okay. um, you what you had mentioned about being in a situation where you, even as a man in a situation with another man didn't quite know how to navigate that mm -hmm. and coming um, from also in the film and television world there's such an incredible new set of protocols that have been put in place here in Vancouver. Um, it's just a little share because what has occurred since that's happened, um, not only have women felt safe to speak up, but suddenly men know that it's super cool because there's a protocol. So it's like, oh, I can just say, um, hey bud, actually this isn't okay. And then the guy, the other guys, because they are really respecting their the male counterpart will be like, yeah, you're right. They're they they're very quick to rise to the occasion when their male colleagues um, call them out on it. It doesn't become ruffling of feathers, and it it's and I've seen it happen where men call me um, about something and know that they're safe to report it up the chain. And so it's not just women; like men, finally are set free to do the right thing, which yeah. perhaps they weren't able to before yeah. without yeah. reprisal. But I guess I have two questions. My first one is for. Um, for you, um, I guess, or for anybody, you as well, is do you find that when you're applying for work, say, wh whatever path you took, whether you went to audio school or whatever, or started on your own, do you find that there are equal opportunities for you that you can apply? It's like, you know, some people just tell you, send your resume everywhere, or do you, are you selective in that process? Do you maybe, like, I don't know, I'm just asking if you think that there is an equal opportunity for you, or... Why not? I like to think there is. Mm -hmm. um, and that's m mostly based on working at Monarch and knowing how many resumes come through there. And then we are 50% and it. And it's really actually because those were the best people for the job. It's not like Tom was going out and being like, I'm going to hire women. Yeah. But that to me speaks to equality because there were, you know, there's 30 resumes a day at least. Mm -hmm. um, and we came up 50 50. So. I've never actually sent a resume to a music, have I? I've never <laughs> gotten a job that way, yeah. so I don't personally know. Um, but yeah, I, li I like to think that, I mean, generally people are open. Yeah. Generally people aren't out to shut down women. And you ever really, when I went, when I visited uh, LA last year, I met, I don't think I'd ever met another female engineer. Oh. And I met yeah. five. It's in so my like ten place. days there, yeah. No, you're totally right. Oh, yeah. Which is super refreshing. Yeah. Like, yeah. and mm -hmm. and with Jenny too. She, I can't. It, something about the Juno panel came up, and she, until that point, she hadn't. It hadn't ever occurred to her that it was weird or out of place that I was a woman. She's mm -hmm. like, oh wait, what? I was like, oh, I, well, you know, there's not many in Canada. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I love that. I love that you have that yeah. mentality. I think that's g moving forward healthy. And we also need to be really aware of, of you know, of differences in equality. But um, yeah, man, did I feel at home in that <laughs> city? <laughs> it was so good. Anyway, sorry, no I digress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you for your answer. I also, the other thing I have is maybe it's more something to think about or just like a prompt just question. The STEM sciences, for example, right? We know that there's a lack of women going into the STEMs and a lot of the time it's because, you know, they, they, they feel alienated. They feel like this, they're one woman in a class of like 40 men or whatever. Um, so is it maybe is the solution to the problem not necessarily like trying to look into hiring more women, but starting smaller? How can we expose more women into this industry? Because I know, at least for me, I didn't get exposed until I was in the studio because a friend was in the studio and they for were like, sure. hey, you know, like, do you want to come along? And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't realize that this whole world or whatever and that I would ever want to be a part of this. And um, 
And for me, like that opportunity, if I didn't go with them, I probably would never be here. Wouldn't like know that this is what I wanted to do, you know? So is that something that maybe, how can we like foster that or how can we add that to our, um, I guess, plan to make equality for women in the music industry better, I guess. Yeah, it's that's just a such a great question. Mm -hmm. And just everything you're saying is so true. And it's not any one thing. I think mm -hmm. you're also saying that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you're totally right. Like, it happened when I was 19, 20, so I got kind of lucky. But the second I s was exposed to that, the second I stepped into my first commercial studio, I was like, oh, I'm never leaving. Mm -hmm. Like, get, yeah. just try and get me out of here, right? So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's where it... I agree with you. I think that's where it starts. At that public speaking is the scariest thing in the world <laughs> for me. Like I can barely. I hold guess I'm just microphone. asking any yeah. of the panelists too. <laughs> no, but, is like you know, how can yeah. we how can we make that better? Is there yeah. if there's any ideas or or if you know of anything here, that's right? like, like that that already exists? Or yeah, yeah. Sure. I think it's. They do. They do. They do. Hello. Hello. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I think it's like a kind of historical in a way. You know, we've always had more men, and then now more women are getting into it. Mm -hmm. So, um, just I think the earlier the better. So, there's a guy at work, for example, he has three daughters. Mm -hmm. He's always bringing them in. He's always going, look, who, look how cool dad's doing, showing like an explosion or something, and they get excited. Mm -hmm. And uh, I try to start a women's group, which kind of fell through because of the same reason you mentioned. And uh, one of my ideas was to bring young girls uh, to the studio where I work and and give them a tour and show them what we do mm -hmm. and sit on the console and, and let have them sit on the console, have them record fully, have them see that they don't have to necessarily be princesses or they can be princesses at the console. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it just show them that they can be that. I think the earlier the better. But also, we can add that in, in later stages, of course, doing these panels and everything. So. Yeah, yeah uh, it's, it's starting in the school system. And I know AES is starting to do that now. I mean, audio is such a great industry because it's really, really small at the top end. <laughs> like, everyone seems to know everybody. And the people that work, because we work in an area that evokes emotion in such a unique manner. You run into amazing people all the time. But if we can start in the school systems and expose women to the, the fact that this even exists, um, and if, you know, there are societies, I mean, the AES is one, I think it's $20 a year, but unless you go to the convention, people don't think it's worth their while, although there's a lot online. And if you meet someone or you have a mentor, um, don't be afraid to reach out and talk to them because uh, it's, it's a small world and people will answer. But yeah, I think going into the school system, starting earlier, and the programs that are technically based, that talk mostly about the gear, they, they tend to attract uh, men more than women. So I think it's the way the programs are run. And, and when you introduce things like this, even in a program, even if it's, um, you know, um, full sale, I'll have to pick something that's not here, or, or you know, just, um, you know, where they're mostly men, but if, if, you, if they brought in more women on panels and, it, and working with musicians, and this is a whole area that I think is sometimes missed. Musicians don't know what they're missing by not working with an engineer or producer. They can't get that same training. I'm talking a lot about classical musicians for sure, but um, that they get from working with a coach. Because when you learn to listen, so a lot of these schools, if they did more listening classes and discussion and a little more hands-on and bringing in outside faculty that included men and women, then the schools would change and there would be more outreach. They could put it on their website. You'd start seeing more women. It's simple. That, that's all that would have to happen, I think. Um, hi. Um, thank you all. One of my biggest inspirations is Sus Susan Rogers. Um, and I was just curious, was there any particular person that inspired you or was a mentor that kind of helped you pave your own path in production, mixing, engineering? Wo man or woman? Be interested to hear about women, but... I mean, I'm inspired by everyone that I come in to contact with. That's what's kind of amazing about this job. It's like a bottomless or endless learning curve. And there's just like every new interaction because there's the emotional element as well as the technical element and the art and the abstract and all that. Uh, every session 
has me learning something new or trying something new. Um, so, I mean, this guy, this guy, this guy, like really everyone. Um, and then, you know, women like Trina, like that was a big deal having her here mm -hmm. today. Um, yeah, I mean, everyone who does this is just such a unique soul. I haven't really come across anyone who's, you know, static in their ways. And yeah, especially in Vancouver, like everyone who makes records in Vancouver is amazing. It's weird to say that, but it's true. It's super inspiring. And yeah. Anybody? Yeah, I'll steal ideas from male, female, transgender. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, did you see on, on the webpage to de dedicated to the event? There's a Susan Rogers. I didn't. That's really cool. Oh, <laughs> she's uh, on, uh, and she talks about working with Prince and with uh, and some of these issues. It's uh, a podcast my favorite right now. Uh, Jamie Liddell, um, hanging out with audiophiles. And I do have some other resources there. And if you send me more links, it could be you know one place, one repository of. Uh, some links. There's the womensaudiomission.org that you mentioned yeah, to me. Terry. Terry. Yeah. 